Biomedical Ethics, four boxes, four topics, and the table of Johnson et al., or Johnson's table. We're going to talk about something that's very interesting and intriguing because it has so many names. And the reason why it has so many names is, is it's because it's very popular. When something's very popular or useful, people tend to give it several names or nicknames. So now that we're all intrigued, we ask, what is it all about? The hit is actually well described in one easy to read book. The title or the name of the book says a lot about what it is all about. Unless you're unfortunate enough to grab one of those books with attention grabbing titles with no connection to what's inside. This one does have a connection to what's inside. It says clinical ethics. Therefore, it's ethics applied to situations when we practice our clinical craft. Physicians, nurses, healthcare providers, social workers, pastoral counselors, therapists, psychiatrists, health workers, and more. And then it says, a practical approach to ethical decisions in practice. Therefore, it's supposed to be an approach that's very practical that we can easily use while we're working as care providers. It's practical, meaning it's not heavily deep or theoretical. So we don't expect to see our usual 500 to 1,000 page bioethics or medical ethics books with all their confusing concepts, analysis, and topics. We expect to see something that we can read easy and we can apply easy, very practical. The next thing we have to pay attention to when picking up any book is the introduction. Why? Because we want to know what it is. If someone gives us some kind of food that we're not familiar with or something that we're, we're seeing for the first time, we first ask, what is it? So we're given the name, the title. Then someone says, chicken and asparagus sandwich. Now, even if we know the name, we're not going to start eating and swallow something that we don't know. So if it's the first time we've heard a sandwich that's chicken and asparagus, we then ask, what is it all about? Or what is it? And thus, we read the introduction. We are not going to start swallowing chapters, sections, or pages inside the book without knowing what the entire thing is all about. And in the introduction, the authors say, clinical ethics is a structured approach to ethical questions in clinical practice. So their thinking, while we're doing our work, will encounter situations with ethical dilemmas and ethical questions, and we're supposed to provide solutions, answers, and come up with decisions. And what they want to do is they want to give us an approach that's easy to use and that's very structured. And then they say, central to the practical application of clinical ethics is the ability to identify and analyze an ethical question and to reach a reasonable conclusion and recommendation of action, which means that their structured approach is probably going to concentrate on identifying and analyzing the ethical question. So it's less focused on coming up with answers and decisions and more focused on trying to figure out what we're dealing with. Why clinical ethics? Meaning, is it worth our time and effort to figure this one out? Is this really useful? Is this really going to help us out? The creators of this approach think so. According to them, if you have a person or a patient with a problem and a need for caring, and you have a person who's providing the care or a care provider, this caring relationship or therapeutic relationship between them always comes with ethical responsibilities, ethical considerations, and issues. Always. And then we ask, is that really true? Is there ethics in everything? How come we don't see it? Well, probably because we don't always look. We don't always stop to consider more closely. Sometimes it works if the problem is simple, but if the problem goes beyond small and simple, it's probably not a good idea not to look and not to consider ethics. Actually, if we look at the creed and oath of any care provider, we always see to help and not to harm. So there's actually ethics even in the core values of any caring profession. Now, before we look at the approach itself, we ask what's the core, the main, the big idea behind the approach, behind the structure. It's actually very easy to understand. First, we consider the ethical principles. There's beneficence, non-maleficence, autonomy, justice. Some people even include other stuff like empathy, compassion, fidelity, etc. Now, if you've 
gotten hold of one of those big bioethics, medical ethics textbooks, it might look somewhat easy to define some of these, especially the four. And it's actually not that easy. It only looks easy in basic introductory textbooks. Anyway, even if it looks easy in introductory textbooks, it's so complicated, confusing, and difficult to apply them in actual cases. And so the creators of the approach ask, how do we use them in actual cases? Is there an approach that can help us use them? And they say, well, maybe we can better understand the ethical question and analyze it better using a structured approach, then it would be a lot easier to apply the actual principles. Thus, we have the four boxes, topics, or the table with four cells, medical indications, patient preferences, quality of life, and contextual features. First box, medical indications or indications for those of us who don't consider ourselves medical providers. So indications for what? It's indications for or against an intervention or for or against an action. So now what we actually have is an approach that's trying to help us figure out whether we should or should not do an actual action, intervention, or proceed with an actual behavior. Now for people working in medical facilities or healthcare facilities, this is very, very familiar territory. These are actually the usual questions asked. What's the problem? What's the objective of the treatment? What's the failure rate, the success rate? the pros and cons of any proposed intervention, the risks, the benefits, the potential harm, the potential good. And without this approach, I would guess this is the main box that would drive the discussion and influence the decision making. If the one running the show is a medical professional or a nursing professional, you'll notice that the kinds of questions being asked here are questions about getting benefit and minimizing harm strongly related to the principles of beneficence and non-maleficence. 